it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to do a follow-up conversation with Elvis in the afterlife. If you haven't listened or watched the playlist, there's a huge playlist here uh, with Elvis. Prior to the release of his movie in the summer of 2022, I actually have channeled Elvis before multiple times. So a few disclaimers on this, or maybe words of advisement. Okay. I am going to respond in a channeling session here now to the question, some of the comments that were left on the first video about the movie. Some of the comments or questions aren't going to be related to the movie. Okay. So if you're here just for that, this isn't the right video for you. Go watch the other one. Okay. And some of the advisement I would give you to her advice is it's so sweet when you guys are like trying to police the comments and For those of you who are regular viewers of Above Life Channel, you know that the style here that I have is a conversation style. It's as though we're hanging out at the kitchen table, everybody has their coffee, their tea, whatever, and we're talking. That's how this works here. That's how I channel as a psychic medium here on Above Life Channel, conversation style. So it is relatable to you as a human being, which means I relate to the spirit in the afterlife that I'm talking to in that manner, as though we're friends, as though I'm getting to know them, as though they're at my house. Not like a formal interview. I am not the Barbara Walters of channeling. So if you expect that or want the Q&A or want the stuff, you can like Google and look up online. This is not, Above Life Channel is not the place for you, okay? (laughs) So that said, do not engage in the comments, people, with other people. If they're kind of all fiery, just ignore them. Because remember, some people think Elvis is still alive, (laughs) all right? All right. With that, I'll use my Elvis mug from a wonderful client of mine that sent this to me a few years back. Thank you. You know who you are, Ms. Texas. All right. So I have my trusty phone. We're going to use this to um, read the comments off of as we're recording it here. I know it looks like a stormtrooper, doesn't it? Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, Let's start. Let's start. Okay. I'm just going to read these. I haven't read these comments. The only thing I've done is I had to go in because I guess somebody was being really mean to other people and I have that had to be taken care of. Um, I would like to ask Elvis if he and his grandson are together in the afterlife. This is a common question I get. So we're going to start with that one. So let's bring him in his energy. Let's do that. Can we do that? How does that happen, Bridget? Well, it's not that complicated. You can get your journal out and write to that spirit in the afterlife. You can go into a meditative state and connect with that spirit in the afterlife. You can just quiet your mind, feel their energy, and you can connect. It is not reserved for the select elite few who have psychic gifts. Everyone is intuitive. You got a spirit, right? I hope you have a spirit. You got a soul in the body, right? That's all you need to connect. Okay. Elvis, you want to come in here? I want to get close. He's like, sure, sure. Like he gets really close now. He was farther across the room before. Yes, I will tell them that. <laughs> he says, to prepare, Bridget did not listen to my music. He says, you want to tell them who you listen to, Bridget? Well, I, I was just, I needed a little pick-me-up, you guys, this morning. So I was on my playlist on YouTube, and I just happened across a Michael Jackson song, which is totally related to Elvis, uh-huh, Lisa Marie. So we could have that conversation. We have addressed that in other channeling videos, and he just says, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Billy Jean was the song, if you guys are curious about what I was listening to. Okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) See, people don't know you like this. They think you're like super like contained or like really wild. Maybe I don't know how they see you, Elvis. I don't know. I feel you as like just a regular person 
and you, you're like, we want to work. Like, it's like, we're going to work. He totally super respects my work. So he's like sitting on this rolling stool that I have in here that I use usually when I'm like setting up a tripod and doing like a video or I'm channeling, or I'm doing like a program or something where I'm doing a talk and that kind of thing. Um, and he's sitting on that and he's like, kind of scooted up to the side of my desk here. He's close this time. You're close. And he kind of puts his hand like on one of the notebooks I have over here. Um, from when I do session, I take I do like scribble notes and stuff just because that's how I do my channeling. I doodle and stuff and connect when I'm in session for you privately. Um, and he kind of puts his hand on it and he says, it doesn't really matter what they all think. He says, it matters what they can feel. That's what music's all about. How you feel, it moves your body, right? He said, it moves your body. He's like, Bridget. He like grabbed my hand. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I haven't had a spirit do that in a while. Yes, you can feel energetic touches and senses in your body. Yes, you can. Your body is intuitive. It's not just this weird mind out of your body experience, just so you all know, understand that. Okay, so he's literally touching my hand. It's not romantical, you guys, not romantic. He's not my type, not romantical. Sorry, I'll. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I know E. <laughs> he's like, I call him, I called him L and he's like E, like E-L-L. -L. He's like, Bridget, I gotta be cool. Make me cool in the afterlife. <laughs> like, okay. He says, you feel it in your body. You feel it in your body. You feel with your body. And he says, sometimes it's too much. It's like, that's why people put all sorts of things in their body to help. He says, it's kind of like trying to control your body. I think that's a natural human tendency. He says trait or human something, human thing. He doesn't say tendency. Trait is the closest vibration that I can hear that would match that. It's not a direct, if you're new here, it's not like a direct thing. I interpret what he shares with me and I feel it in my body. I feel it in my heart chakra as an empath. I sometimes hear very specific things. And then also um, my third eye, I see, I see him. So it's your body. He says, it's your body. That's why you love music. It's a vibration. He says, that's why you feel it in your body. He says, that's what he's like, tell them that that's what spirit is. It's your body, your body reacting, responding, feeling. And he says, I know sometimes it's not so good. It's hard. It can be real hard. He says, he says, especially when there's grief, grief is too much. He's talking about grief and he's acknowledging his mother's passing and he wants to share with you somebody here. We're supposed to do Q&A. E, we're supposed to do Q&A. <laughs> but somebody here has just had a, a recent death or passing. And he's acknowledging the grief. Okay, please. I do not want to cry <laughs> for myself. Okay. Yeah, he says. I feel it. I know. So do I. Thank you. He has a very big heart. Very big heart. You're very sincere. He says. Thank you. Thank you. He says, thank you. This is a really intimate connection. It feels very genuine, very sincere. Again, not romantical, you guys. Not for me. For you, maybe it would be. But, uh, The intuitiveness of your body is extremely important, you guys. That's what he's showing me. The intuit, the intuition in your body, the senses, your body reacts and knows what the truth is, what's right and what's not. And he says it's not a judgment. He says that's a thing. It's the truth. It's not a judgment. It's not to be judged. He says. And when you, if you think, he says, if you think there's a white, a white guy in a big long white robe waiting for you when you cross over. And he's like, the gates are not pearly. They more look like the gates of Graceland, actually. <laughs> he says, it's just like a garden gate. You just push the gate open and you walk through. He says, at least for me. And uh, he says, like the grounds of Graceland. That's what it feels like. And he says, um, so heaven is a reflection of what you need, what you are, and how you need to find peace in your heart and yourself. And he says, meditation is a great way to do that. I don't know if any of you all, um, you all do that. He says, meditation. 
you know what, Elvis, you know what we should do? I should do a meditation with you, just like I've done with like Prince and Freddie to help people connect with you. He says, that would be, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you'd like that. Okay. Can you let me go of my hand down? Because it's really like, I feel like it's concrete. He's like, I think you need the support, Bridget. <laughs> like the moral support. What? And he's like, heartbreak. Like he's like, try Something about heartbreak and the heart and heartbreaking. Oh, okay. Can we not talk about personal stuff here on Above Life Channel? That would be great. Um, we have people that would really, really love to, to hear some questions answered from you, my friend. And I literally just saw, oh my God, that was cool. That was, oh, I don't want to swear. Oh, that was so cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, just a minute. I'm just watching. It's kind of like fog, like on a stage. Like I see this foggy energy around him. He doesn't, people ask this a lot. He doesn't look like a human body, like my body, like how you see every part of my body, every little, you know, like everything about like my earrings, the, the, the curve of my ear, the way my hair is whipping out, whatever. It's not like that. It's more of a, almost like a photograph that's moving. I don't know how to explain that. Is that right? He says, no, he says, oh, that's not, he said, it's more than that. It's not just 2D. It's not like two dimensional or one dimensional. He says it's like 4D, four dimensional. It's kind of like a, you know, like a cube or something like there's different. Um, yeah, there's like different ways to connect and to shift the energy such that I can see or sense him in a different way. Um, let's explain to explain to people how you look. He has his, he's younger. He always looks younger and um, he looks pretty. I'm going to say that it's okay. Right. If I call you, he looks pretty. Cause he has this, like, I'm like, I need my hair like that. I need to grow it out again, you guys, so that I can have that like wave in my hair. Like you have, that is so beautiful. I love that. It's pretty. It's pretty. And uh, a little bit of a baby face. <laughs> That's what I would say. A little, um, almost pouty a little. And uh, you have really nice eyes, super nice eyes and great eyebrows too, actually. You have a little scar. What's up with the scar? Uh, did I mention that before? He said, Bridget, you know, it's like, you gotta, I, I mean, it's not, he's like, it's not polite to point out people's imperfections, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, and he's got like a white jacket on with a black collar or a black shirt underneath or something like that. So it's all, it's white. The jacket is white and then the shirt underneath is black or something underneath is black. And um, he looks kind of formal, a little bit formal. He's like, oh, I can take off my jacket. And he just takes off his jacket and he just has a black um, shirt underneath. Interesting, he has like a bolo tie. I think that's a nod to something. Is it like a bluegrass vibe or something? Then he says Grand Old Opry. There's a nod to that. I am recording this on the 18th. I think it's the 18th. Yeah, the 18th of July, 2022. There might be a um, historic piece to this that I don't know because I don't Google stuff. I just have conversations with spirit. So if you know, put it in the comments below. Um, a Grand Old Opry vibe or a like a bluegrass kind of thing. Sums up close around this date, what would that be? July 18th, what would that be? Write it below, because he mentioned it and it feels poignant. Okay. Oh, also, um, I'm, I need to go back and make sure I say I'm sorry for your loss. It feels like somebody lost a mom is what it feels like, a mother or someone that felt like a mom or somebody very, very nurturing. Did you just in case? Okay. Plus I just took my allergy pills, so you know, that's a thing. All right. I like the shoes. I just need to comment. I love the shoes. They're like white with black, like wingtips. Those are cool. I need those. Do they make those? I want those. Like, like for me, like, can I go get a pair? That is cool. That looks cool. That looks like something kind of like a Doc Martin type Eastland, old school Eastland. Some of you people know what that is. Some of you people don't. Um, a Rockport, maybe. Um, that would be cool. Oh, those would be. Ooh, I have no idea where I'd wear them. 
Oh, I could wear them to like Paisley Park on an after dark night or something. That would be fun. Ooh, I could wear them out at in uh, Florida when I go to Florida. He says, you can wear them to Graceland. I, oh, yes, I can. It's weird because it, he doesn't say Graceland. He says Graceland. 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 I kind of do have a low voice. <laughs> oh, my God. So do I. <laughs> Woo. That was interesting. I haven't quite used my low voice. Maybe I should do that. Mm-hmm. He says, hmm, you do have a range, Bridget. You have quite a range. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Let's not even talk about that. Okay. To the questions. This is what you came for, right? Okay. Feel free to put a timestamp as to when the actual question and answer start, although you're going to miss all the great conversation we have. Hmm? You want to be friends with Elvis and I? You should probably sit for the conversations. Okay. That's how you get to know people, right? Got to build rapport. All right. Okay. So let's talk about your grandson. Are you together in the afterlife? This is a hard question for me. You and I have never talked about this because of the nature of death. And I want to be respectful to your daughter. Um, This boy looks beautiful to me. He looks a lot like you. And I don't know what he looks like, you guys. Again, not Googling, not interested in that at this point. I probably should after though. Maybe I should right now and actually go, holy crap, right? Feels like eyes, the eyes are piercing. It's the eyes. Do some people feel like he's the incarnation of you? Yeah, he says, <laughs> He says they can believe what they want to believe. People will, he says, people will believe what they want to believe. He's like my offspring. He says he should have some kind of genetics, <laughs> you know? He's like, isn't that how science works, you know, kind of thing, like biology. He's like, he should have some of my uh, characteristics, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, he does definitely remind some people of me. And then Elvis says, my mama said the same thing. He definitely has a, and then he says to me, vibe. He wouldn't say the word vibe, but that's, he just literally used my words. Thank you. That was really sweet. Oh, you're so great. Okay. So he said, uh, you, you would use the word vibe. Yeah. He said, his mama said, yeah, he has a, that's something. Did he sing too? It feels like he sings. Yeah, his voice too, his tone of his voice is interesting. He says he has quite the range. I see the guitar. I see, um, he said, um, he's talking about depression, you guys. He's talking about a very heaviness. And I feel like there's, ooh, I don't want to get into this too deep. Um, It feels like there's addiction around him. So it feels like, not Elvis, the the grandson. And it feels like, Oh, it's interesting. Why is that? Why am I seeing that similarity? He died young, I know. God, it's so weird. I see the, um, oh my gosh, I don't know why this is coming up like this, but I see Brandon. I don't know what his name is. I'm sorry. I don't know what your grandson's name is. Um, And the people are going to be screaming. Hey, I'll scream. No, I'm bad with names. I'm not going to do that. There's got to be mystery. Um, Brandon which reminds me of Bruce Lee and his son. His son died in an accident in a movie, but I think it was with a gun. Oh, geez. Okay, connection. I'm just gonna pause for a moment while you guys make that connection. Not me, I'm not gonna do that. You can. I'm sorry for your loss. He says he was on the planet. You know, he was there for a while, for some time. He said he made quite an impression on people. And I see him like at seven years old for something. And I see that a lot of comparisons between him and Elvis. Um, He's acknowledging grief from the mother to the child. Like how... Lisa Marie had to suffer the loss of her son. He's saying my daughter had to lose a child. And he's saying, that doesn't seem fair. He said, there's really not 
an understanding of justice when it comes to loss and grief. There's really no justice that can be done. And he's like, two wrongs don't make a right. And he says, um, and he shows me depression. He shows me addiction. He shows me um, like that. There, there's a lot of factors and variables that feed into an, uh, an outcome such as this is what I'm going to say. I know, I know that I know. I don't, mm, I don't think it was like an overdose. I think it, I think it looks like a, um, a tool was used for the, okay. I don't want to, um, I'm not into the pain and the drama and the evoking a deep emotion in people, especially because this has been such a time where people have such mental health awareness and a lot of triggers. And if this is a, tr if like suicide or addiction is triggering topics for you, then please know that I'm trying to be delicate here. And this might not be a good place for you to feel, but please understand that the energy of Elvis is not feeling this heaviness or sadness about it. He's acknowledging the human response to the death and the loss of someone so young. So the death of a child is also something very triggering for people. And I understand that. And there's a healing energy, a lot of green energy, green light, Raphael, Archangel Raphael, supporting you all, encompassing and enfolding you to create a lovely bubble of healing energy and light for you so that you can feel that and feel safe to express that. So are you with your grandson? He's like, he doesn't quite know how to respond to that because the term with, it's like, it assumes there's a body and we're hanging out like at a club and, and singing. And sometimes afterlife spirits will show me that. They'll show me that so that you and I can articulate what with or being with means. Um, he's literally showing me like walking, like in a beautiful and, and there's smell, scent of like jasmine or something. There's a lot of real fragrant bushes blooming around me. And we're walking in the kind of like very green and very lush area. And it's in the South, like Mississippi or something. And they're walking and there's water, like a river. And they're together. It's, it's like, uh, it's, <laughs> it's almost like a, um, oh gosh, what's that show? where they walk, they're walking down, it's an old show. I can't think of what the name of it is. Um, the Andy Griffith show, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of the end, you know, and they're whistling and they're walking with their fishing poles kind of thing down the road like that, kind of like that. Um, and he says, it's the simple things. Yes, we're connected. Yes, we are one. Yes, we are re, um, not reconnected. That's not the right word. He says, we are connected. We are one, he says. And he kind of puts his arm around his shoulder. The hair on this boy is beautiful. Beautiful. And he was a boy, right? He has a son, grandson. But I, he's very, um, he's pretty. Let's say that. He's pretty. Yeah, just like his granddaddy, probably. Huh? Okay, let's read some more. Oops, ouch. Hmm, okay. Hang with me, guys. Come on, come on, come on. All right. I swear I could hear his beautiful voice in the background of your channeling. Here's another comment. I'm not going to say your names because I don't know. I didn't get it. Like, I don't, I don't want to call you up. Um, saw the movie yesterday. Did anyone see where Elvis and Ginger were driving through the gates at Graceland? That was really Elvis at the first part of the movie where they had a screen full of concert. Oh, I didn't see that. On the bottom left was a picture of our Elvis. Bridget, please tell Elvis that his fans love him and miss him so much, yes. Um, Ginger, so that was your girlfriend at the end of your life, yes. He says, yes. Yes. And then he says, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about all that. He says, I caused a lot of pain and I know. He says, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Here's another one. I'm a lifelong fan of Elvis. He's so talented, generous, sincere. Okay. No question there. Lots of sharing, beautiful comments. 
funny how life is. All of these messages are coincidence and coincidences. Thank you for channeling. Okay. I can't imagine how it would feel, how it feels to feel his spirit. Um, just, it's normal to me. Like, I'm not starstruck with Elvis, and I'm not sure why that is. Not because he's not worthy of starstruck. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, quite. But it's because there's such a humanness to him, I think, that I feel the genuine humanness, like the frailty of life and the vulnerability to be, you know, maybe in a scenario where other people use you for your whatever you can provide for them, maybe. Um, not that they used him necessarily, because that's not all of his relationships weren't like that. I, I don't want to present like he just didn't know and he was just being used. It was fine for him. It wasn't like that. It was not like he's stupid. He was not stupid. But he also like really just genuinely loved people and would do what he could for them is how it feels to me. I just want to clarify that. Um, <laughs> if you don't have regrets, you ain't been living. That's what he said last time. Yeah, that was really good. That was good. That would be like a good tweet. I should put that on my channel, maybe on Instagram or something. Okay. Um, oh, and then they said, Okay, my question for Elvis is he seemed to really love people and had his genuine and genuine care for them. I just said that and I did not read that. That was fabulous. Okay, genuine care for them no matter what. Through all of it, how was he able to do that? And then this person says, I have never detected any cynicism of Elvis or defensiveness about him. I think that's quite remarkable given his experience. He says, he talks about his mom. He said his mama taught him to just love people and take care of them. He says, people loved and took care of me too. You know, he says, um, it's just how people work here. It's just how it works. And I don't know if that means in his family or in the South. That's just how it works. You take care of each other. You just, you just do that. If you can, you do. And he says, if you can, you do. It's not all that. He's not on a pedestal. He's like, I'm not some, um, he's like, he's not some superhuman. He just, it's not, it's, he thinks um, the energy is kind of that cuts coming through is like, most people are kind. This is kind of the vibe I get. He's like, I'm not anything extraordinary that way. That was really sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Boy, there's lots of stuff here. Sorry, just I'm trying to find questions. Oh. Yeah, this is a good one. This was a great question. Thank you. Is it true that there's a healing process once you cross over, like into the afterlife, to create harmony in your soul? This is a question for both you and Bridget. Ooh, do you want to answer that? Go ahead. <clears throat> he says, um, I can only speak for me. Yes, he says, part of it is, um, because of all the, the pain that was held in my body. It took a bit of uh, undoing to be embraced by the light, he says. I did meet my mama, yes. And somebody must have asked that question because he just literally just responded to that. He's showing me like getting up out of a hospital bed is the imagery that's used. I know that's not how he died. I'm not okay, you guys, I know that. But, um, he's showing me an image of him getting out of hospital bed, unplugging the tubes and standing up and his mom being there at the doorway and hugging him, just hugging him and holding him and crying. That reunification for him was very beautiful. I want you guys to understand that. And uh, he says, it, there's not so much your mind isn't so much involved. It's not like an unlearning process, but that's like the closest thing I could like compare it to, he says 
to humanness, you know, he's like, it's kind of like an unlearning. You have to unlearn things. And he says, you know how hard that is. And I'm like, yes, in the energetics that are now, people are talking about ancestry and lineage and clearing stuff from lifetimes, your own lifetime, your family stuff, future stuff, all this stuff, clear, 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 do your work, do your work, do your work. And so, yes, we can totally understand that. <laughs> it can take a lot. I'm going to ask you this. Did you know you were going to die? Oh, God. I don't want to say that. <clears throat> I wanted to. He said, I wanted to. I wanted to be done. It's just too much, too much pressure, too much pushing, too much pain. And he says, I just wanted to be done. He makes me feel like he just wanted to rest. You guys, that's what he makes me feel like. He just needed to rest. It's too bad you couldn't have come to Minnesota and gone to like Hazelden or something and got some real help, you know? It's like, yeah. He said, I was very abusive to my body. And he says, I was abusive. He's saying himself, I was. He says, I was. I, I did not understand the importance of honoring the sacredness, the sanctity of the body. That's a huge message, you guys, honoring the sanctity, the sacredness of the body. He says, I just wanted to be done. He says, when your body is still and your body has, has had enough, he says, your mind, it goes and goes and goes and goes. Your mind never gets tired. He said, that was probably my biggest challenge is my mind. <clears throat> and then he also says, unresolved grief. He says. He's showing me healing like a spiral, like this opening kind of funnel. Instead of it coming down to a little point, he's showing me the opposite, you guys, where it starts at the point, like when he, the death point for him, and then the spiraling up bigger, bigger, more and more and more expanded. That's how it looks. That's really beautiful, like a golden spiral going up this way, opening up. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's like a freedom, you guys. That was a beautiful question. Wasn't that a great question? That's such a good question. All right. Um... Such a good question. Whew. Let's see. Let's see if we can get any really good fans coming up. Oh, can you talk more with Elvis about relationships in a separate video? Yes, not this one. That would be about an hour long conversation because I'd have a lot of questions for him too. I don't know that he's like, oh, like I'm an expert. He's like, not that I'm an expert. <laughs> he literally says, let's be clear. I'm not an expert, <clears throat> but I'll do my best. Let's see. A lot of thank yous, Elvis. A lot of thank yous. A lot of we love yous. Somebody said I had a fangirl moment. Did I? I had a fangirl moment before. You should watch the original video. The first couple of times I talked to him, I was like, ah, ah. not really feeling like that now, but yeah. Love you, Elvis. Love you. I love you. Lots of people. Did Elvis have any other children that we didn't know about? He looks at me and says, not that I recall. Not that I recall. He's kind of, kind of shocked by the questions sometimes. I mean, it's okay. You can ask whatever you want. I mean, he's a spirit. He's not going to judge us or anything, but he's kind of like, not that I recall. And I'm kind of like, I think people, I think that would um, have been something we would have all known about by now, given all the DNA stuff, you guys. But yeah, that's a good, but that's, I mean, that's a justifiable question. Let's just kind of scroll to the end here and see. Oh, this is interesting. Um, somebody corrects me, or uh, I mean, I think not, maybe not corrects me. Maybe someone um, clarifies, let's say that way. Um, she says, Elvis died not knowing about the Colonel. That part of the movie wasn't true. <clears throat> How do you feel about that? He says, mm. He says, I made my peace with that. And he says, um, 
when you're with people, you know, he says human beings and you care for them. You're willing to um, look the other way a lot. He says, people did that with me. That's what he's saying. People did that with me. And I did that with him quite a lot. He said, um, I did ignore, he says, I did ignore some of the signs, but it's like, he felt like family. He felt like, um, like someone I'd need to care about, you know, and take care of. And he said, um, he did a lot for me. And I, uh, I made my peace with that. That's what he says. Okay. I hope that helps. Hey, thank you, my friend. It was nice to see you and have you hanging out here. There's lots more questions. We could do like probably five videos. We should probably do another one about the relationship piece. But I mean, I'm not sure. I don't want to just be an Elvis only channel <laughs> either. <clears throat> but thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. So this is Bridget. You've been listening to a afterlife casual chat style conversation here on Above Life Channel. I hope that Elvis and I have inspired your spirit and filled you with hope and encouraged you to live your life. You can connect too, okay? I don't want you to believe that you need to go to a psychic in order to connect with your loved ones in the afterlife. Mm -mm. You can if you want to. It, It can help, yes. It can give you some peace. It can give you that initial feeling of contact, but you can do it. You have a soul, you have a spirit, and that's all it takes. And it takes a little practice of attunement or tuning in to the way that would be best received from you. It might be through songs on the radio, which I know you've had already, or might be through symbols like a feather or a butterfly or some kind of symbolic meaning meaningful thing for you specifically with that person. And yes, you can, you personally can have conversations with celebrities in the afterlife. Why, why can't you? They are human beings just like you. They have tons of wisdom that you can tap into and you can build a, almost like a mentoring um, spirit guide, supportive connection with them. If you choose to do that, you can, it is totally hundred percent possible. There's no like hierarchy like that, like we have on the human plane. It's not like that. You can do it too. I'll remember, I'll have to write down, remind me, I have to do like a meditation for you, for people to connect with you. That ain't going to happen like tomorrow, people. I got other stuff going on this week, but that would be great. That'd be a good gift. All right. Thanks for being here. Remember, it's your life. This is your life and you get to live it. Just live it.